Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have another little electronics project but first let's let's look at the solar collectors they are actually producing heat that's quite incredible right now the temperature in the storage tank is like 41 degrees celsius and on the roof it's 56 degrees celsius so that's pretty nice it has just started so the water is not really hot yet in the, in the pipes oh now it got hot <laughs> so this is very cool and outside this we have a storm so um, the sun is shining and there's a big storm so that's kind of that's kind of new well <clears throat> I have an electronics project and I got parts home from China here we are I've got another nice little box and it's uh, circuit breakers and the value of five uh, I don't know it's probably five dollars but I'm not sure but it's uh, it's like a automatic fuse so uh, this should be good for three amps so if there's a current over three amps this should break and um, I bought these because over here I have my power supply <clears throat> I buy uh, I uh, I made this when I was in uh, school uh, about seven seven grade and um, we have something in Denmark called night school like kids can uh, at night they can go to courses that they like and we had electronics and I went uh, to electronics actually two nights a week and I built this power supply and it was actually one of the major things that I did uh, in, in that class and I've been very happy with this this is from 0 to 30 volts and it's from 0 to 5 amps so it's a pretty good power supply but it kind of when I charge a battery on it, uh, very often it uh, burns off the fuse. And um, what I did, uh, not very far uh, for uh, some time back, was that I, I mounted a fuse on the back. Um, originally, the fuse was on the circuit board inside of the thing. So every time that I blew, blew a fuse, I had to take it apart and change the fuse. Now the fuse is on the back. I'll just have to remove all the things that is on top of it. I mounted a fuse here and uh, so that every time that the fuse breaks I could just change the fuse there um, so I'm kind of eager to think if I can reuse that hole so I don't have to drill another hole in it but let's see about that and um, the, the problem was actually that um, I ran out of fuses for this thing it uses a fuse called 3 amp point 15 which is a it's a pretty normal fuse uh, and it's it's these small glass fuses glass fuses they're not there they're over here 
these things and uh, I ran out of the right size this is actually the right size I got uh, I got two of two fuses for from my cousin he had some fuses um, but it was like a box like this I really wanted and I was looking on um, on the internet on the Chinese sites to uh, to get some really cheap ones and I could get some cheap ones I could get like 100 fuses for 10 bucks or something like that but then again I could get an automatic fuse like this and actually I could get an I could get a whole bag of them of five of these things for thirteen dollars so I thought well let's try that out but before I install it I want to test this and see if it really breaks when a, when a current over three amps is coming through here so I'm gonna do that and the fuse is still good in this one so I'll use the power supply to test it but I can see this is this is pretty dirty so I was just gonna wipe this off first it's uh, it's, it's kind of you're always cleaning stuff in a lab like this or in a working environment I just did the film with the with the rotating saw it's down there and there was like plastic everywhere so uh, yeah for for a while I'll probably be cleaning up plastic pieces but okay let's let's go and try to break the fuse okay this is really typical I wanted to see this before I recorded it and so I put on the fuse here and I thought that I could take up the current here and, uh, and test the fuse. What happened was that I'm probably not gonna be able to break this because it's for 200 and uh, 125 volts or 250 volts, three amps. Uh, but what happened was I broke the fuse in my power supply instead and that was exactly what I didn't want to do so crap so let's see if that's the case turn it off remove the wires and let's see behind it screwdriver Yeah, it broke. Are we able to see this? Maybe. Well, we can. We can take the meter here. It's definitely not saying anything now. So I can see it clearly that the fuse has broken, but I am not I'm not able to see it on the camera if you can see it. I don't think it's able to focus on the fuse. Yeah. I think maybe you can see, yeah, maybe there you can see it that the string inside is absolutely burned off. So, what a piece of junk. And I'm of course thinking about the power supply which I built, which, well, you could go to uh, night school and not pay anything. It was, it's kind of free. It doesn't cost anything here. 
but um, if you had if you wanted to build something like this you had to pay for the parts so uh, this power supply was it's cost me about 800 kroners which is probably 150 bucks dollars but even today it's it's good i'm still happy with it when it's working so now we can we will see what's inside At the time I was <clears throat> I was dreaming about making another power supply over here for AC. So this should be the DC power supply and this should be the AC power supply. So that was that was the thought at the time. So this is the power supply inside. And very conveniently the the schematics in here and this is one of the, the the hardest part of electronics is that well Denmark is a very small country so we don't really have like electronic magazines or anything like that so um, we have German magazines so everything here is in German so part of the work with working in electronics is trying to figure out what the Germans are saying here um, and this is definitely not my strong side but um, we had a good teacher and he was able to help us and I have a empty package of uh, fuses in here so that I can remember how big the fuse is that has to go in and the fuse is over here and it's broken the one on this on the board is broken and then there's two wires going up to the to the fuse box that I installed so I'm gonna try and take out the fuse box and see if this one will fit instead I'm not gonna be able to test it then but I'll see if it fits or if I have to make another hole somewhere I could probably have it behind the the heating sink here but I'll see if that will work oh I was just about to make a stupid mistake I was so uh, uh, busy filming and telling about this that I was about to uh, take out the fuse box without removing the power of this thing and there is 220 volts on this thing and uh, I would have had I would have gotten an electric shock so um, remember that if you're filming something you have to think on the in this you have to keep thinking even though you're filming so I'm heating up the soldering iron and I'm gonna take off the fuse box and I'm gonna take off I guess I put on this tape on the fuse box to protect me and uh, actually it just helped because I had my fingers on the fuse box before I realized that oh, this is probably not that good an idea I don't know if the tape helped me think but it's really not nice to be electrocuted and there's the fuse box and we'll just take the wires out here and this one is with the fuse box. Let's see if this one. Oh, it can. Oh. It can sit there. The hole is a bit too big, but it comes with this nice thing. Oh, there. That tells you that this is the circuit breaker. So on the other side, you won't be able to see that 
that there's a bigger hole inside. That's pretty cool. And I think I'll I'll borrow this washer. I probably there's like a, a, the hole is not very good here and it's probably because I didn't have a drill bit that was big enough. I'll probably have to zoom in for you to see that, that's the wrong way. Here we are, all down there. This hole, it has like all kinds of stupid uh, It's not that bad, but it's a bit wobbly. I don't know if I can remove this with anything. I have some. I have some sandpaper here. But... I'm afraid of damaging the paint. remove some of it. Luckily the, the case is made out of aluminium so it's not that hard. And I want the this label I want it to be up so that if I take the, this thing apart I can see what's on the label. This is gonna look pretty good. these wrenches <laughs> and I had the number 15 and I have the number 13 but the number 14 is not at home where is it I have used it somewhere and not put it back on its spot that's that was stupid so I'll have to try something else I have another one like such a thing wrench or something here in Denmark it's called a svenskneule and it's it's roughly translated as a Swedish key and don't ask me why in there and it looks pretty good that's not bad and then I'm just gonna solder these two wires back on there that'll just take a little bit it's a real mess if you 
if you watch something that you did I made this power supply uh, 23 years ago or something like that 24 years ago and everything is just a mess if you, if you see something that you made way back I'm just looking at all the things that I would have done a lot better today but um, well that's how it looked back then. Come on. And I don't think it matters which way the power goes through this thing. So, let's bang on. Oh, should I test this? That's probably a good idea. So, right now it's off and I'm gonna hook, hook in the power. It's under the table. If it smokes, could you just turn it off? There we are, there's power on it, and I'm just gonna touch it and turn it on. And the meter is back on it. Over here. That's a nice way to see if it's working. If it's if <coughs> when the fuse pops the the voltage is not able to go up and down. So now we're back again. I think I'll put some tape on this thing again so that I don't do anything stupid like touching that and I have some electric tape like this in a nice warning color get your hands off this thing so I'm just gonna take off the power again under the table and I'll put some electric tape on those because it's very easy to touch this right here when you're taking off the cover and uh, normally you don't die of 220 volts but it's really not nice and I'm just gonna make sure there's no power on it Oh, sorry. So now it's a lot harder to get electrocuted on that sort of power supply. And my fix should be good. This is neat. And I don't know if you can see the circuit board down here. This was what I made in 8th, 7th or 8th grade. And I did. We made the, the circuit board ourselves. Um, we drawed all the lines on the back side of it and we removed the, the, the other parts with some acid. And we drilled all the holes for the component, for the, for the things, the resistors uh, and electronic devices. And well, a lot of this was homemade and a lot of it was bought um, 
the system was that these small things like uh, uh, some of the transistors and resistors and uh, uh, caps and stuff we got for free but some of the, the larger things like this cap and this bridge red rectifier and uh, transformer like this one over here where are my finger there and of course this big transformer and the, the these nice meters on the front size and we had to pay some of some of the, the expensive things we had to pay for ourselves and the case itself I think this case was 200 kronos which is approximately $35 for the case alone so but it's, it's still a good power supply I'm really happy with it and now I don't have to change the fuse all the time. So let's hope that is good. I'm gonna put the case back on. Or the le it seems that I forgot to um, record an ending for this video. So thanks for watching my videos and do subscribe. And actually the fuse, uh, automatic fuse was working because I happened to short circuit the power supply later that night. Have a nice day.